Hello everyone. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Wendy Beckman and I'm a registered dietitian with the New York State Office for the Aging and SNAP in New York. Thanks for joining me on What's Cooking with Wendy. September 15th through October 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month. So I thought it would be nice to feature a recipe that is inspired by Hispanic cooking, a black bean and vegetable quesadilla. We'll be posting the link to the recipe in the chat box. The recipe can also be found on the SNAPED New York website at www.snapedny.org. Traditionally, quesadillas are made with either a corn or flour tortilla, and then they're filled with cheese and heated in the pan until the cheese melts. Today, we're going to make a variation of a traditional quesadilla. We're going to add some black beans and vegetables to this quesadilla. Now, you know that I like to encourage you to make half of your plate fruits and vegetables. So adding some vegetables to this quesadilla recipe is a great way to get some more vegetables on your plate. So let's look at the My Plate graphic. This recipe actually hits almost all of the food groups on the My Plate graphic. Here we have the fruits and vegetables section. Now there aren't any fruits in this recipe, but there are lots of different veggies. Now you wanna vary your veggies by eating lots of different colors. Each vegetable has different nutrients in it that our bodies need. So by varying your veggies, you're making sure that you're getting all of the different nutrients that you need in your diet. Now here we have the grain section. The tortilla in this recipe is made from grains, either wheat flour or corn flour. If you're able to find a whole grain version of a tortilla, that will contribute to making half of your grains whole grains. We want to make half our grains whole grains because whole grains products have more fiber and nutrients in them than their white flour counterparts. Now I'm using white flour tortillas because that one was what was available in my grocery store. It's okay to sometimes eat white flour versions of grains like white bread or white pasta, but when you can, try to find whole grain versions and eat those at least half of the time. It's certainly okay to eat more than half of the grains, whole grains, now, I tend to like the whole grain versions of food, so I like to buy whole wheat bread and whole wheat pasta, so I probably eat a little more than half of my grains as whole grains. Now, we also have the protein section here. Even though this recipe is vegetarian, the black beans and corn provide us with protein in this recipe. Proteins are made up of amino acids. There are some amino acids that we must get from our diet because our bodies can't make them. They're called essential amino acids. All animal forms of protein are complete proteins. They contain all of the essential amino acids that our bodies need. Any proteins from meat, poultry, fish, dairy, or eggs is a complete protein. Plant proteins are often called incomplete proteins. They lack one or more of the essential amino acids. You can make up for this in your diet by com combining two incomplete plant proteins to make a complete protein. Usually a bean, legume, nut, or seed combined with a grain of some sort will make a complete protein. So things like beans and rice make a complete protein. Peanut butter and bread make a complete protein. <laughs> so in this recipe, because it contains black beans, corn, and wheat flour in the flour tortillas, these foods combined form a complete protein. There's also dairy in this recipe. Right here on the my plate uh, graphic here is the dairy. It contains cheese. Now I've chosen a low fat Mexican blend of cheese. Dairy provides some protein on our diet, but it also provides calcium and vitamin D. If you're lactose intolerant, you can substitute non-dairy products like soy milk. Look for ones that are fortified with calcium and vitamin D. So this recipe has almost all of the food groups in it. Add an apple or another piece of fruit for your dessert and you'll have gotten all of the food groups in one meal and that is nice and efficient. So remember, everything that you eat and drink over time matters. You want to find your healthy eating style and maintain it for a lifetime. The right mix now can help you be healthier now and in the future. Eating more fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains is good for heart health, and it can also help protect against some chronic diseases like heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Now, before we get into this recipe, last month I made some vegetable packets. If you didn't get a chance to see the demonstration live, you can still view it here on the New York State Office for the Aging Facebook page, or you can see it on the New York State Office for the Aging YouTube channel. We can put a link to the NYSOFA YouTube channel on, in the chat box. 
Now, I've used the vegetable packet method to make sweet potatoes a few times since we did that demo. I think that that's my favorite way to use the vegetable packets. I put the sweet potatoes into the tin foil with a tablespoon of brown sugar and a quarter cup of dried cranberries. The potatoes always come out evenly cooked and tender and cleanup is easy. They're also delicious and my husband and I love them. So if you watch the vegetable packet demo, have you tried any of the recipe suggestions? Let us know in the chat box if you have tried any of the vegetable and packet recipes that we demonstrated last month. So let's get into making some black bean and vegetable quesadillas. Remember to wash your hands with soap for at least 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer before you start cooking. Gotta make sure it's in all of the different parts between your fingers. So let's look at the ingredients for this recipe. This recipe makes about six servings. Here I have one can of black beans, drain and rinse. This is the no salt added variety. The recipe calls for two medium zucchini chopped or grated. I have one large zucchini here. The recipe calls for four ounces of spinach chopped, which is about four cups. Now that may seem like a lot, but if you use fresh spinach, it's gonna cook down in the pan. I probably have about two cups here. I'm using fresh, but you could use frozen spinach. If you use frozen, you're gonna to wanna to thaw it out first and then squeeze out as much of the liquid as possible. A good way to do that is to use a colander and press down on the spinach until the liquid comes out once it's thawed. Here I have one can of corn that has been drained. I have four ounces of low fat cheese. The recipe calls for cheddar cheese, but I have a Mexican blend here. I have one tablespoon of canola oil, which I'm going to put in the pan so that it'll heat up. And I have a pinch of black and cayenne pepper. You can add more or less of the pepper, depending on your taste. I also have a tablespoon of water here, and I have about six flour tortillas. Now, like I said, those are white flour tortillas, but if you can find a whole grain version, in the store, if they have that available at your grocery store, that's a good way to add more whole grains to your diet. I'm gonna also add one red bell pepper because I like red bell peppers and because I wanted to add some more color. So first, like we said, we're gonna let that oil heat up in the pan and I'm gonna add the zucchini and the bell peppers. Let's add those two things first. So we're going to stir that up a little bit. Now you're going to want to cook this for about five minutes. You can add a cover if you want to, uh, to help it sort of uh, cook a little faster. But uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave the pan lid off. You're just going to try and cook these vegetables really until they just start to get soft, but not not overly soft, not too mushy. And then after these have cooked for a few minutes and gotten a little bit warmer, we're gonna add the corn and the spinach. So there's the corn. And we're gonna add the spinach. So you can see the spinach takes up a lot of room in the pan right now, but it will start to cook down. So it'll wilt a little bit, some of the water will come out of it and it will become smaller as it cooks. You can see that those are some nice colors in there. It really looks beautiful. I'm gonna let those things heat up. So next we're gonna add the black beans to the mixture. When you add the black beans, you can sort of mash them around a little bit, you sort of squish them a little bit. That helps to sort of make this into a vegetable paste. This sort of helps to keep everything together, which is going to be beneficial when you're putting it on the tortilla so that everything's not sort of falling all over the place. And we're just going to keep mixing that up and let that heat up. Already we can see how the spinach is sort of starting to cook down a little bit. Now, once we have that mixture pretty well combined and some of those 
black beans mashed up. And once it's all good and heated up, we're gonna move this pan out of the way. And I'm gonna bring in a different pan. So here we have another pan here. And that's the pan that I'm gonna cook the tortillas in. So I'm gonna spread some of the vegetable mixture on the tortilla and then we'll be putting it in the pan. Um, we can use some nonstick spray in the pan if you like. I actually made some of these earlier and I didn't need to use any spray at all because it was a nonstick pan. So that's absolutely um, a, an option for you. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some of this mixture We're gonna put it on the tortilla and you can see it there, there on the tortilla. And then you add some cheese to it. And that's looking pretty good. And you fold it in half and then you can go ahead and put it down in the pan. So you're gonna cook each tortilla for about four minutes per side or until the cheese melts. I actually, on my other stove, I didn't need four minutes per side. I only needed about two or three and they started getting nice and brown. Usually, um, you know, you can use a spatula to turn it. That makes it a little bit easier to deal with um, than trying to, to use a spoon or something like that. So um, that is how we get that going. That's actually probably gonna take a couple of minutes, but let me show you some that I made earlier. So here are some of the tortillas that I made earlier. You can see some of the spinach and things in there. And here I have some low fat sour cream and I have some salsa and you can actually add some guacamole to it if you wanted to as well. Um, you can use low fat sour cream or another substitution for low fat sour cream is low fat or fat free plain Greek yogurt. It's a very similar taste to sour cream. And a lot of times it's lower in fat than sour cream is. So that's a nice option right there. I actually uh, ended up uh, eating some of those for breakfast this morning because they, they smelled so good when I was cooking them and they were actually really delicious. So I'm gonna turn this one over. Nope, it's gotten a little bit brown, but I think that's as high as that goes. So we'll let that cook for a little bit more. So I think that you can see from this recipe that really any kind of vegetables will work. You can use leftover veggies that you had from the night before. You could use broccoli or cauliflower or carrots. You could also add something like a portobello mushroom or some eggplants to give it a heartier texture, especially since there's not any meat in here. Sometimes some people prefer that. Um, I know that I did eat some of these for breakfast, but I'm probably gonna end up eating them for lunch as well, because we've got a couple of them here and I'm definitely gonna add some salsa to it. So I hope that this recipe gave you some more ideas on how to incorporate more vegetables, lean protein and whole grains into your diet. Now, believe it or not, but holiday season is right around the corner. I certainly can't believe it. It seems like this year has just flown by. But in October, I'm gonna be making a roast turkey breast with sage, rosemary and thyme. I felt like that was sort of appropriate for the holiday season. So I'll be back with another edition of What's Cooking with Wendy on Friday, October 29th at 11.30 a.m. right here on the New York State Office for the Aging Facebook page. You can find out more ways to save time, save money, and eat healthy if you join me next month. This presentation was funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. Have a great day and stay safe out there.